coming up in today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. P2010 TDI gets the nod from EASA. Also, contact. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft successfully touches asteroid. And 2020 Mold TGP Championships change venue. Thank you for joining us this Friday. We hoped you had a great week. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with exciting news today, so let's start with Technum has received a type certificate for the P2010 TDI from EASA. The P2010 TDI certification adds diesel slash jet A1 engine to the family of Avgas and Mogas powered Technum aircraft. The P2010 airframe with its composite fuselage design and all metal wing has proven to be a good match for the diesel engine. The P2010 now offers the flexibility offered by the use of diesel slash jet A1 fuel and the low operating cost provided by the dual FADEC control continental engine. Along with the 180 horsepower Avgas slash Mogas and 215 horsepower Avgas engines, certification of the 170 horsepower TDI widens the range of choice for P2010 customers. This latest engine development brings the aviation market fuel efficiency and performance. The turbo diesel slash Jet A1 power plant offers the following. Excellent fuel burns ranging from 4.5 US gallons per hour at 55% to 7 US gallons per hour at 75% power. This provides consistent performance up to 8,000 feet and allows operations up to 18,000 feet. Moreover, the standard P2010 fuel tanks allow a range in excess of 1,000 nautical miles and endurance of up to 15 hours. You can count on ANN looking forward to conducting a test flight sometime next year. After the break, we have a story you don't want to miss, NORAD F-22s intercept Russian bombers. All those details after the break. We've been using Swift fuels for five years. We use it on two different Rotax powered aircraft. Swift fuel gives us the power we need, the reliability we need. We've also found that it has a very long shelf life. It runs clean. We don't have to scrub gunk out of our oil tank. It makes a huge difference compared to 100 low lead. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some of the most interesting stories you don't want to miss in this brief segment we call Around the Patch. Let's start with North American Aerospace Defense Command F-22s intercept Russian bombers. North American Aerospace Defense Command F-22 fighter aircraft supported by E-3 Airborne Warning and Control System and KC-135 refueler aircraft intercepted two Russian Tu-95 bombers escorted by two Su-35 fighter aircraft late Monday evening. NORAD also positively identified a Russian A-50 supporting the intercept aircraft which loitered within the ADIS for approximately one and a half hours and came within 30 nautical miles of Alaskan shores. Old Russian aircraft remained in international airspace and at no time entered U.S. or Canadian sovereign airspace. The deadline to apply for WAI scholarships are coming up quickly, so you better act fast. Thousands of dollars of scholarships will be awarded at WAI's upcoming 32nd annual 
International Women in Aviation Conference, and WAI says the time to apply is now to qualify for the scholarship. The applicant must be a current WAI member by November 1st and submit their application by November 10th. 82 individual scholarships worth nearly $400,000 are available in areas ranging from aerospace to engineering, from maintenance, dispatcher to flight training. Numerous career enhancements and type ratings are available. Honeywell partners with Pipistrol. Pipistrol has selected Honeywell's fly-by-wire system for the Nuva V300 cargo UAV. Choosing a modern, lightweight, highly capable system with a proven architecture ideally suited for their autonomous cargo UAV. Fly-by-wire computers act as the brains of the aircraft's flight controls by operating them electronically and can be found inside nearly all large fixed-wing aircraft today. This product is intended for smaller autonomous cargo and urban air mobility vehicles. And Dufour demonstrates eVTOL flight transitions this summer. Dufour reports that it completed the first phase of flight testing of their eVTOL demonstrator with 550 test flights. They were able to show a high degree of stability and control in all conditions, including full transitions from hover to cruise and back again. The demonstrator was designed as a research platform to help them build technology for IRO-3, their upcoming manned tilt-wing aircraft for medical transport and regional air mobility. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. NASA OSIRIS-REx spacecraft successfully touches asteroid and collects some samples. NASA OSIRIS-REx spacecraft unfurloughed its robotic arm on Tuesday and, in a first for the agency, briefly touched an asteroid to collect dust and pebbles from the surface for delivery to Earth in 2023. This well-preserved ancient asteroid known as Bennu is currently more than 200 million miles away from the Earth. Bennu offers scientists a window into the early solar system as it was the first taking shape billions of years ago and flinging ingredients that could have helped seed life on Earth. At 1.50 p.m. Eastern Time, OSIRIS-REx fired its thrusters to nudge itself out of orbit around Bennu. Then it extended its 11-foot sampling arm, known as touch-and-go sample acquisition mechanism, and transited across Bennu while descending about a half mile towards the surface. After a four-hour descent, at an altitude of approximately 410 feet, the spacecraft executed the checkpoint burn, the first of two maneuvers to allow it to precisely target the sample location site known as Nightingale. It will take about a week for the OSIRIS-REx team to confirm how much sample the spacecraft collected. After these messages, if you're planning to go to the 2020 Multi-GP Championships, well, there's a new venue. I'll tell you why and where after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Introducing the new ELT 345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter or ELT boasts an industry low price while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. The 2020 Multi-GP Championships make a sudden change of venue. As if dealing with the issues surrounding a global pandemic wasn't enough, the folks at Multi-GP had the venue for their upcoming championships sold out from under them. Multi-GP's Chris Thomas said in a quote, We are saddened to announce that the venue for our 2020 Multi-GP Championship has been changed to Valcaria Airport in Palm Bay. Multi-GP was extremely disappointed to find out that Daytona Stadium recently changed management, which 
voided our agreement. With just over two weeks to go before the championship, it was not possible for us to secure another stadium for the event. Fortunately, we do have permission to use an alternate location in nearby Palm Bay, which is also close to the Orlando airport. And while it's not a stadium, it will allow us to run a viable championship. The league currently consists of more than 30,000 registered drone racers and 760 global chapters. That does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and of course on Twitter. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently operating on our winter schedule, which means it's streamed Monday and Friday with Airborne Unmanned alternating with Airborne Flight Training each Wednesday. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next week.